talk about just uh, you know how SD how far SD WAN's come since its uh, inception. Uh, what exactly is SD WAN? Um, you know, it's, well SD WAN first of all it stands for Software Defined WAN. Um, so um, an SD WAN router is really a router where all of the intelligence and the routing information is handled in uh, the overlay, really, which or basically at a software level um, versus uh, you know, traditional router is going to rely on um, traditional protocols like uh, routing protocols like PGP, uh, OSPF, those kind of things. Um, so it, the intelligence is really in the the software. Uh, that's why it's called software defined WAN. Um, really, what it does is going to it's going to autom fully automate all your connections between all your locations. You know, so no longer manually configuring tunnels between your sites. Um, and it's all done from a central platform, typically. I think we have a, a monitoring platform um, that orchestrates the entire your entire network for you, um, kind of all in on one single pane of glass. Um, and so, uh, you know, in this drawing here, we see that like the 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 nice part about it is you can use really any circuit with an SD WAN router. So you can use an internet circuit, MPLS circuit, uh, you know, four G or five G uh, backup. Um, and it doesn't really matter to the SD WAN, you know, it's all kind of the same, um, and it can route over any and establish tunnels over it or any connection in an automated fashion. So basically, the circuit that you use uh, doesn't really matter to SD WAN. You know, it can be internet circuit, MPLS circuit, LTE circuit. It doesn't matter. Um, it can establish connections to all of your branch offices and your data centers over any connection, and it'll you know do that in an automated fashion. Um, that's kind of the the bread and butter of uh, SD WAN. So, what are the kind of the benefits of SD WAN? Um, well, really, uh, call quality is a huge benefit of it, right? So, you know, when SD WAN was first invented, you know, this was it was really created like for VoIP and video quality. You know, it was to solve the problem of uh, choppy audio, you know, or, uh, or meetings being scrambled or video calls. Um, it was to solve that issue when you're using you know a mixture of circuits and, and things of that nature. Um, and so it has some really cool features that you won't get on any other platform. You know, things like forward error correction or packet replication. And basically what that is, is it will take, let's say you're sending a VoIP packet across your circuit. And if, if it sees that you're experiencing latency on one or the other, it will duplicate the packet and send it down both paths, uh, down both circuits. And then whichever packet arrives first, it will drop the other one and, and take the first one. Um, and that'll really kind of minimize if you're experiencing uh, you know, issue or packet loss or, or or latency or jitter on your circuit, um, that can help mitigate uh, some of those issues. And so that way, that's really transparent to the user. You know, user doesn't notice that you're having a circuit issue. Um, and really, it can fail over much faster than like a traditional firewall can because it's going to be constantly, it's going to be almost at a, on a per packet basis determining which circuit is better at any given time. So get that fast fail over and that protection for your video calls and your <laughs> and your VoIP calls. No one likes choppy audio or scrambled video. Um, and another benefit is just ease of management. Um, managing multiple locations is is so simplified within SD WAN. You know, because really you just create a template once, and then you can apply it to all your branch locations. And if you need to make a change to like you know all of your locations at once, you just update the template, and that's pushed out to all your branches in a nice uniform way. Um, and so that makes it that takes a lot of time away from having to configure each site you know manually or individually. It really saves you know us network guys a lot of time. Um, and then just at the advanced monitoring and the troubleshooting tools that are built into it, you know a lot of them will tell you you know. You know what's going on. If there's issues on a circuit that you might not see otherwise, uh, it allows you to pull packet capture directly from it. Um, there's some other advanced integrations that you can put in there, like Thousand Eyes and other monitoring platforms. But um, you know that's really uh, that really makes your life easier as well. Um, and also just moving away from you know I'm sure if anyone's been a network engineer for any period of time, you've seen a tunnel configuration where you have multiple locations and it just gets messy, you know, trying to manage, all right, I gotta have this tunnel to this, this office, this tunnel to this office, and your config is now a thousand pages long and, you know, now it's unmanageable. So it really gets you away from that and like, you know, simplifies the setup between your offices. So um, getting back to our, our, you know, our key topic here is, where is SD-WAN today? Uh, so when SD-WAN first came out, you know, it's kind of like 
Yeah, I liken it to like the electric cars, right? So when it first came out, SD WAN was kind of like the Nissan Leaf, right? Like it's kind of like a niche use case, right? You know, if you had a short commute, you know, it wasn't really fancy, not a whole lot of bells and whistles on it. Um, you know, and that's what it was when it first came out. Um, you know, but now today we see where, you know, electric cars are now. They, you know, they're super advanced. They can be your daily car, you know. Um, and that's really the case with SD-WAN. You know, when it first came out, it was really only intended to improve weight performance. Um, and that was kind of all it did. Um, and typically, you still needed a firewall in line, right? So you would have your SD-WAN and then your firewall behind it or your firewall in front of the SD-WAN device uh, because there wasn't any option for like remote users to VPN in. Um, they didn't have the advanced security features. Um, and then even a lot of time, like when they first came out, like they couldn't, you couldn't put them in like your data center because they just didn't have the throughput capacity that, you know, a traditional router or a firewall has today. Um, but now today, you know, SD-WAN devices, they're full-fledged next-gen firewalls. You know, they have, um, you know, IDS, IPS, anti-malware, SSL decryption, you know, all the, the fancy next-gen firewall features are now built into the platforms. Um, and there's even built-in remote VPN solutions now. So now you don't need another firewall in place as well. You know, that was that was kind of the hard sell of SD-WAN before. It was like, yeah, you know, here's your SD-WAN router, but you still need a firewall as well. But now, you know, a firewall can truly be your only edge device and replace your firewall. Um, you know, and there's lots of third-party integrations now with, um, inf with infrastructure as a service providers like Megaport or or uh, Equinix, or Equinix, and really it kind of simplifies a lot of people, you know, the trend right now is, you know, moving to cloud-based platforms, you know, Azure, uh, uh, AWS, GCP, you know, and it really simplifies that um, today. And there's also, you know, at least Cisco and uh, Juniper has one where it's, uh, it integrates with your local LAN. So now you have, a, you have a full single plane of glass for your LAN, your WAN, you know, and it's all integrated in one uh, nice bundle there. So just getting into the SD, uh, next gen firewall features that are built in, you know, starting with just Cisco SD WAN's plat platform. Um, so they have signature based IDS IPS, you know, intrusion detection and prevention. Um, they have anti malware inspection. They can do SSL or HTTPS decryption. You know, it's a zone-based firewall. Um, you can create um, firewall policies based on identity. So you can do, you know, you can say, you know, this group of users or this user is allowed to access this, but users in this group are not, um, rather than just doing it on IP address. Um, so that's, you know, and that's something that really wasn't available before. Um, you know, now the big one that just came out um, a couple months ago is, the routers can now, you can run any connect remote VPN client directly to your SD-WAN router. Um, so you no longer need a Cisco ASA to run for your remote users. Uh, they can run any connect and connect right to your SD-WAN device. Um, so no firewall is needed there. Um, and if you needed to take a step up from there, um, there's also an a, a native integration with Cisco Umbrella, uh, which is kind of like Zscaler or you know other SASE providers like Prisma Access, and they actually have integration with those as well. Um, but you have the option to automate a tunnel to Umbrella to have your traffic, and you know, then with further inspection, things like CASB, um, you know, it could be a secure uh, web gateway um, and things like that. So um, definitely has all the firewall features that you could that you could need, and you know, really can fit most use cases there. Um, and then the other. Uh, platform that I'm going to highlight here is, is uh, VMware VeloCloud. Um, so they also have a um, solution. Uh, rather than them doing the security on the box, um, they have it built into <laughs> built into their their gateways, you know, or their controllers. Since the controllers that uh, control the SD WAN devices, they um, have these the, the same features. You know, the, you're going to get the anti malware, the SSL decryption, uh, cloud web security, stuff like that. Um, but it's on the controller. So you would send the traffic to the controller like you normally would, and it can do this inspection. Um, so two kind of different methodologies there to do it, but they both accomplish the same thing. Uh, one is just on box, and then one is kind of built into their, uh, their controller platform. 
Um, and this is the other cool integration that's available now. So there's one with Megaport or Equinox or Equinix. Uh, basically what this allows you to do is, um, you know, typically if you were setting up, you were migrating to Azure, or AWS, um, you'd want to set up like an express route, which gives you cheaper pricing on egress fees and much faster, more reliable connection. Uh, typically with that, you would need an MPLS circuit or a private circuit in order to use that. Uh, but with this integration, you can have internet only circuits and still leverage an express route by essentially sending your traffic to Megaport first. Megaport appears with your express route. And then, so you're, uh, you're sending your traffic essentially over the internet to the nearest um, Megaport pop. And then from there, they're going to get a low latency fast connection into Azure. Um, and so that's built directly into the uh, SD WAN platform. So you can actually figure all of this within the SD-WAN portal without ever logging into Megaport or these other portals. It's a direct integration that's been put in place, which is really useful, uh, especially if you have a heavy presence in Azure or AWS or another um, uh, cloud provider. Um, questions, anyone have any questions? I know I went a little bit fast there, but uh, you know, any questions so far? How do you manage all of your SD-WAN routers? Can you speak to that a little bit for me? Okay. Um, yeah, so it depending on the platform, you either have um, Cisco, Cisco calls it Cisco vManage or uh, VeloCloud calls it VeloCloud Orchestrator. Um, they functionally do the same thing. So, right, it's a, it's a cloud hosted, well, you can either host it in the cloud or you can host it on your, in your internal network. Most people just choose the cloud hosted option because it's, you know, much easier to set up. Um, and then from there, you control all of your sites. Um, so all of your configuration is done in that portal, single pane of glass, and that's how you control all of your locations. Um, I do have another one. Um, how would you transition from a traditional firewall to an SD-WAN router? When you're transitioning from a traditional firewall, um, you know, a lot of it is going to be making sure that one, you know, there's any requirements that you have the feature overlap between SD-WAN routers and uh, the firewall. 99% um, of the time you will be able to um, because there's the very, the feature parity is, is very on par now with SD-WAN. Um, and then just, you know, preparing the circuits, you know, this actually can, you know, can actually be really good because you can start to look at downsizing, you know, do you, do you still need an MPLS circuit now that you have SD-WAN? Can you go with a cheaper DIA? rather than paying for a private MPLS circuit, um, you know? So uh, those are kind of things that you can do. Um, and then just, um, you know, working on setting up connectivity between like your old network and your new network and your new SD-WAN routers. Um, you know, there's kind of a, a migration process to happen there, but, um, you know, it, it is, it's, it's really simple of a migration. Um, I think the hardest part is typically just mirroring your rules over just like, Switching to any firewall, any between any firewall, you're gonna to have to mirror your rules. And then I have one more for you. Is SD WAN more complex to set up than a firewall? Definitely, there there is a little bit of a learning curve. I would say, you know, just transitioning from using traditional routing protocols and using SD WAN. Um, you know, SD WAN is fully GUI based. Um, the Cisco SD WAN, you know, you can still interact with the CLI, but um, you know, just the transitioning of the mindset from, you know, I'm going to use, I got to use BGP to connect all my sites versus, you know, how do I set up the overlay to automatically connect all my locations? So I wouldn't say it's more complicated. I would say it's just once you get over the learning curve, the initial learning curve of it, you know, you'll find it, it's much easier than a traditional firewall for sure. Excellent. And that is something we can help, right, with is set this up for somebody? Yeah, definitely. We, we do this all the time. I've done very many, many uh, implementations of this and migrations from uh, different firewalls to SD-WAN um, and even we'll even provide training you know I can we can do training sessions with you on how the platform works and how we're setting it up and you know all the documentation that you might need on that.